Good morning. All right, I wasn't certain for the mic. Good morning, everybody. All right, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. I am Pastor Carl, and no matter whom you are on life's journey, we thank you so much for being here with us this day. We pray that your hearts will be open to hear all that God will have for you to hear. We pray that you will continually seek our God because our God loves you so much, so we're so thankful for you being here with us this day. We thank you for all the families and friends and visitors that are here with us this day. We pray that your hearts will be open to hear and to see all that God is going to do and that we pray that you will leave here better than you came. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to our music director. I will be singing your announcements. Oh, there's announcements. Good morning. I wanted to give you all an update on the 72 stockings that we had here last week. I delivered them on Wednesday, and they will be given to the Children's Psychiatric Ward at Yale. I also, they were very appreciative of it. I made the comment to them, it was small compared. She goes, no, they have a home. Good job, folks. The blue box is still out there. We've been able to arrange a matching donation, so whatever we collect, we get a match. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the breakfast, if you still would like to order a breakfast, please contact the, uh, what's in your flyer as soon as possible. And we're still collecting the Advent bags out in the Narthex. And I want to thank Kirsten and the kids for today. Praise be. Good morning. Our prelude today is The King of Glory Comes. Our first hymn, We Light the Advent Candles, number 175.
Today we light the fourth candle in our Advent wreath. The candle reminds us of God's gift, gift of love. Before we do that, let us remind the gifts of God symbolized by the other candles in the wreath. The light of hope, the light of peace, and the light of joy. The fourth candle helps us to remember the God, that God is love. The Bible tells us that it is because God loved the world so much that Jesus came. The angel tells Joseph that the baby to be born will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Because God loves us and came into the world to be with us, we must love and care for others. Jesus came to show us how to live that love. We are Jesus. Jesus is. We are Jesus' despicable disciples. disciples in the world today. Jesus wants us to love others as he loves us. The, this candle reminds us that God loves us and that we must show that love by loving another one. Let us pray. God, thank you for loving us and for sending us, Jesus, to teach us about your love. Help us to remember that your love will never come to an end. Strengthen us to love others as you love us. Amen. like to have a cape on today. <laughs> Amen. Um, we have some prayer requests that are here. Um, Janet Lucent Soup Kitchen volunteer fell, is in a lot of pain. We want to pray for her healing. Um, Pia, a cousin of Vanessa, um, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. In prayer of healing for Lila McGaffin, sister of Linda Bondi. And we also want to keep our nation, state, and others in prayer that have concerns and things that they're going through, even people that are here that may have things that they're going through some that are looking for employment, some that are going through some challenges in their lives in ways we may not know individually, but we know that we all have things that we go through. So let's keep everyone in prayer and believe God that he's able to do all things but fail. I'll pause right now for a moment of personal and private reflection, and then I will say a corporate prayer for us all.
Our God, Advent is a time for us to reflect upon you and your love of us. That how you gave to us unselfishly, Lord, the greatest gift that mankind has ever experienced. We pray this day, our God, that you will have our hearts to be open to receive this gift joyfully. That we will not carry your Lord in terms of what you will have us to receive from you. That we will walk in your grace, that we will walk in your love, that our hearts will be open to receive that which you will do for us, Lord, to refresh us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, even in our times of distrust, in our times of pain. Help us, Lord, to be able to do all that you will have us to do. Let us know that the reason for the season is Christ. And as we go forth this day, Lord, let us have the hope of Christ in our hearts. As we pray, even as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Good. Church looks great, doesn't it? Festive and holiday-ish. Um, this is all good. Uh, it's, it's very good. I'm sure the kids are very excited uh, this week. And uh, as long as we keep in mind the reason for the season. Um, Christ came, and uh, this is why they, they do the pageant here to show... Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a class, but in a, in a sneaky kind of way. But uh, we're happy for them. Uh, we hope you enjoy it today too. Uh, I come up uh, usually during the uh, offering time just to kind of give an idea of the reason why we give uh, to the church. Uh, I will like to, I would like to uh, emphasize the mission uh, for this for December, which is um, the Christmas fund. Uh, formerly known as Veterans of the Cross. Uh, for decades, this for formerly known as Veterans of the Cross has helped provide supplemental monies uh, for pensions and health insurance premiums to low-income uh, retirees. Uh, at Christmas, the offering provides gift checks uh, to hundreds of annuities, uh, but it also provides emergency assistance uh, to clergy and lay employees uh, and their families throughout the year. Please uh, donate to this. Uh, you have the brown envelopes in the back and uh, out the door here. Um, anything you have, uh, it goes every 100% goes directly to them. Also, um, the Christmas Eve collection will go directly to Alex's Kitchen. Uh, most of you know that Alex's Kitchen. Every Monday afternoon, you'll see on the side here. Um, we don't. We used to do it inside Fellowship Hall. Now people come and get a, a bag, but they do get a meal, which is good. Uh, uh, every Monday afternoon. Uh, throughout the year, uh, and it uh, was the dream of Alex Miklos, a uh, Vietnam vet and active caring church member. So keep that in mind too. That'll be Christmas Eve. Uh, I always like to give a scripture uh, for the reason why we give our offerings. And uh, again, a big thing here is our steeple, which uh, the project is going to begin uh, next year. Is that right, Chris? <laughs> Uh, so uh, get, stay tuned. Uh, it'll look a lot better, and uh, it'll well represent our city and um, this landmark that we have here. Uh, we need to cherish it and take care of it. Uh, the scripture I'd like to take is um, Matthew, the 13th chapter, and the 31st verse. Um, it's a parable. Uh, Christ spoke in parables, mostly, and uh, this was, he was basically talking about the mysteries of the kingdom. Um, 
And this is also around the time that you had the um, parable of the fish with the loaves, uh, a the loaf of bread and the, the, the fish. Uh, but this one's a little bit uh, similar, but it states um, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. So it's the smallest seed that exists, a mustard seed. Uh, but when it is grown, it is graded in the herbs and becomes a tree, uh, so that the birds of the air uh, can come and nest in its branches. Uh, so basically, we know that we plant the seed. We all did it, grade school. Uh, you plant the seed, you water it. You, those are the things that you can see. But the thing we don't see is God gives the increase, okay? And you do get increase. You, you sow a seed, you always get a return. So, uh, but you have to look for it and you have to name it. So uh, the church does exist 100% off of uh, donations and we thank everyone for their donations. We try to get 100% uh, donation from the members. Uh, again, everything that comes in supports the church, the workers, we have employees here and that sort of thing. So keep that in mind uh, this season too. Thank you and have a blessed uh, service today with the young youngsters. Good morning. The scripture this morning comes from the first chapter of Luke, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom here will have no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born. He will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth at her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. This is the story of the first Christmas, the night Jesus was born. We celebrate this to remember the hope and joy that this tiny baby brought to the world on that extraordinary night in Bethlehem almost 2,000 years ago. For Jesus' birth did bring hope and joy to the world. Hope because at that time there was much wrongdoing and fighting on the earth, and people were looking for a sign that God would always look after them and joy because after many years of waiting, God's promises were finally fulfilled in a savior, a Messiah, sent to earth to move among people and teach them his peaceful ways. That man would be God's greatest gift, Jesus the Christ. To prepare the world for this man, God asked men and women to prophesy or foretell that Jesus was coming. These people were called prophets and this is what they said. Out in Bethlehem, one and go forth to be the king of Israel. Behold, a virgin shall, shall bring forth, forth a son, and his name will mean God is with us. For unto a child will be born, unto a son shall be given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Prince of Peace. And there shall be no end.
Now when God was ready to give Jesus to the world, God chose a good and pure woman named Mary to be his mother. Mary lived in a little village of Nazareth and was engaged to be married to Joseph, a humble carpenter who lived nearby. One day, when Mary was alone, God sent a messenger, the angel Gabriel, to appear before her. The angel Gabriel said, Hail Mary, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Mary was first frightened and confused by the greeting of the angel of God. But then Gabriel told her that God has chosen her to give birth to Jesus. Gabriel said, Fear not, Mary, you are special in God's eyes. Mary now understood everything she had been told, and it filled her with great joy and happiness. Not long after he had spoken to Mary, the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph one night as he slept. In Joseph's dream, Gabriel told him of God's plan. When Joseph awoke, he went to Mary with joy in his heart. At, oh, at this time, Mary and Joseph lived in a ran, land ruled by the Romans. They were mighty but wicked rulers. The Roman king was named Caesar Augustus. Caesar was so mean and greedy, he issued a decree that everyone should be registered so he can raise money to himself and the other Romans. Joseph and Mary had to leave Nazareth to return to a small village in Bethlehem. It was a long journey, and by the time they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary was very tired and about to give birth. However, they found that so many people had returned to Bethlehem to be registered, and inns were very crowded. Joseph went door to door at all of the inns, hoping someone could spare room for Mary. One innkeeper felt bad for Mary, so they offered them space in a stable out back. The stable was for animals like donkeys, cows, and sheep. But Mary and Joseph were grateful for any shelter they could find in the little town of Bethlehem. Please join us in singing the prayers of O Little Town in Bethlehem, hymn number 100, 180. Jesus was born. The Lord Jesus Christ, the King of thing, the King of Kings, he has called all of these things even though he was born to a simple carpenter and his wife. Mary swaddled the baby Jesus in a band of white cloth and laid him gently in the soft hay in the manger, the animal's feeding box. Please join us in singing the first verse of Away in a Manger, hymn number 203. Oh, 
That same night, there were shepherds watching, watching the flocks of sheep in the hills surrounding Bethlehem. For them, nights were usually dark, cold, and lonely. But that night, Jesus was born. The angel Gabriel appeared suddenly, the, suddenly in the sky. Shepherds have never seen an angel, and they were afraid. Gabriel confronted them by saying, Fear not, for I have good news. Today in the city of Bethlehem, a child was born. This child shall grow up to be your king of all kings and the world's savior. Gabriel, <clears throat> Gabriel told the shepherds where to go so they could find baby Jesus. Suddenly, a whole host of heavenly angels appeared in the sky with Gabriel. Gabriel helped them share the news of Jesus, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all. Please join us in singing the first verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 185. The shepherds decided to go see Jesus. The shepherds were first to see him worship the baby Jesus. They searched their pockets for some gifts they can give to him. They were worried because they were poor and felt like they had nothing to give to the newborn king. However, Faith and trust in Jesus were all that mattered to God. Just being able to see the baby, Jesus filled with the shepherds with hope. Joy to the world, they shouted. Please join us in singing the first verse of Joy to the World, hymn number 179. noticed an unusually bright star in the sky. They, wandered, they wondered if it could be a sign that the Savior had come. They had heard the prophets talk about this moment for so long. With this, they decided to follow the star until it stood over a little stable in Bethlehem. Please join us in singing We Three Kings, hymn number 233. Oh. 
baby Jesus, the three wise men fell on their knees in humble worship. They lay at their feet the valuable treasures they had bought with which to honor him. The first king gave him gold. The second king gave him sweet-smelling frankincense. The third king gave him perfume like myrrh. They knew at last they had found their savior, God's son, who had come to bring peace in earth, peace on earth on that silent and holy night. Please join us in singing the first verse of Silent Night, hymn number 186. Christmas, we would like to leave you all with one last message. job. Don't you all agree? Give them another round of applause. I was so happy seeing them and um, despite all the what's going on with us with COVID and things, we're able to pull this off. So I'm so thankful for what they've done. And they have now have officially rendered me without a job because <laughs> cause they've told my whole sermon. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, <clears throat> I will try to abbreviate my sermon somewhat um, because, again, of the time. So if you find me st staggering, that will be the reason why, because I'm trying to be respectful of the time. Um, so, our God, we thank you for that which we've heard, Lord, and more, Lord, for the hearing and the reading of your word that was read. We ask our God that your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts, and therein allow your word to grow within us 30, 60, 100 fold. And we ask these things in the name of King Yahshua Jesus. Amen. Okay, soon we will be asking, what did you get for Christmas? <laughs> now, we know we shouldn't be asking this question, but we do because it's part and parcel of our experience, as specifically regarding this time of the year. See, the Christmas issue of giving gifts, yes, it originated in the Christian community, and we celebrate this as a way of showing thanks for the divine gift that was given to us all. 
But unfortunately, now many false gods and idols in our culture demand that we spend, purchase, and drive funds back into the economy to help it to get into the black through our purchasing of gifts on this holiday season. Now, during this season, it is unfortunate that many of us are listening to these various voices because we feel obligated to give these gifts. We are demanded upon us to spend and to do all these things. We're controlled into giving, trying to find the right gift, and we're saying to ourselves, can we do it? Did you do it? And this year, did we finally get it right by giving the right gift? So therefore, when we consider the Christian message, we must look to the primary source documents in order for us to remain and have the integrity about what we are doing in and during this season. From the scriptures that we read today and for some that we've seen through dramatization, we note that the first event that occurred here was the issue of the Roman world and with Quinius, Quinius, excuse me, in Luke 2, 1 and 2, under the reign of Augustus Caesar. We find out that the ministry of Jesus started in the 15th year of the Tiberius Caesar's rule, Luke 3 and 1. And so the connection with Caesar and the rule of what was going on and with Jesus' birth, it brings about a static tension that was not really fully understood. So I want to kind of bring that out right now. See, under Augustus Caesar, he brought about what was called the Rex, excuse me, the Pax Romana. And this was the peace of Rome. See, during this period of time, Rome had peace. No wars. So the temple to the god Janus was closed. Janus, the temple being closed because peace was in Rome. So the birth of Christ therefore becomes a cultural and a political problem as the ruler of the then world said they already had peace. But then all of a sudden comes this babe that God declares would bring peace. So that's the tension of what's going on. The world who has proclaimed itself already at peace, yet God is saying that the world is not at peace. So we bring forth this child as a counterbalance to the falsehood of peace that the rulers of the world said that they had. God knew that the first man and the first woman created were supposed to live happily thereafter. But it is apparent that in paradise there was a problem for no sooner than the humans were populated on the earth, we began to see the strife, the problems, the pain, the suffering, of humanity. The first families of the world started to have these tensions. Even the first murder began very soon after the formation of the world. So God is trying to say to the world that though you want peace without me, there really is not any true peace that the world can have. The world, in rejecting 
God's love will never have the peace that God truly has for all humankind. Every parent knows the risk of raising their children because parents do not want their children to be robots. Anyone who loves another person want to be loved for the person that they are, not because you are being made to love them. And we all know that true love can never be expressed without the possibility of love being rejected. And this is the tension of a world that says that it wants peace. Because no sooner than God put human beings on this planet, the tension arose. So God wanted to make sure that humanity could be restored and return to a place where it could truly have the peace that was originally given to our great, 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 you get the idea. <laughs> Parents of Adam and Eve. So to correct this deficiency, God provided a remedy for sin that allowed and would allow humanity to be able to have peace. But the problem is this. Peace, as given by God, we're told could only occur through the shedding of blood. And this is the purpose of the babe. The babe that was born to die. We read in the Bible, indeed under the law almost everything is purified with blood and without, hear me, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin. Hebrews 9 and 22. Without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. But glory to our God. God has made a way to help us to have this burden that separated us from God, this sin into our DNA that only the blood of Christ could remove it. We read the next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1 and 29. See, this baby was born to die. This baby was born as the Lamb of God, the second Adam, whose blood will be used to heal us from sin. To cure humankind's sickness, a disease that so infected us that only the blood of Christ could cleanse us and redeem us and make us whole, that we could be received by God and we could be at peace with our God. When the baby Jesus was born, understanding that it was because of his born, being born, that his blood would restore us back to God, what's not fully understood is that in the time of Jesus, Jerusalem was a metropolis. But it had no economic resources. Only thing that the Jewish people did because they were an agrarian society was that the temple was the main source of economic income. The Talmud, a Jewish religious text, tells us that the economic heart of Jerusalem was the temple, and at the temple is where they sacrificed the animals to God for the remission of sin. 
and the animals that were not eaten was given to the people and they were able to feast upon them. Now hear me, what is not fully understood, and I want to make sure we clearly understand this today, in order for God to remove the sins of the people during the temple back in the time of Jesus, that the priest would slaughter the animals and offer them as sacrifices to God for the remission of the sins of the people for a year. During this period of time, the Talmud tells us that the blood of these animals was up to the knees of the priests making these sacrifices. We're told through the text of Flavius Josephus that more than 1.2 million animals were slaughtered in one day in order to give these sacrifices to God. So the unfinished story of Christmas is this. God loves us in a while we were sinners that Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. Romans 5, 8, and 10. 9 to 10. Let me, say what, let me tell you what's going on here. The blood of Christ, we're told, saves us from the wrath of God. Please tell me you understand what's going on here. We were at such odds with God that God was going to inflict vengeance upon all humankind. Hence, God's wrath was to be poured out on humankind. But only because of the blood of this babe that was born, that we will be reconciled back to God. We are made at peace with God, and we can have a relationship with God because of what this babe was to do, ultimately on the cross at Calvary. The Hebrew priests understood this. And the prophets of old understood this, and they tell us, and I want to read this because I think we need to understand this. This is the prophet Nathan concerning David. He says, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up of your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish his throne of the kingdom forever. I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be everlasting and established. Second Samuel 7, 12 through 16 paraphrased. So we see that God through Christ was making a way for redemption of humankind. So though the story of Christmas is officially starting at 2,000 years ago, it started way before that point, perhaps thousands, perhaps even millions of years prior, because once God knew and understood that humankind needed to be redeemed back to God, then God had already prepared a place to make that redemption happen. So the Christmas story does not end with the, babel, with the babe in the stable. For God is still trying to enter into the hearts of humans today. The Christmas story is God's attempt to let the human people know that he loves them still. Jesus says, listen, I stand at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and you with me. Revelations 3 and 20. Family of God, this is the unfinished story of Christmas. And it's not about the gifts. It's about the relationship. As the angels sang... Peace on earth and goodwill to men. See, the story of Christmas is not finished. 
it is not finished until the star that shone over the stable shines in the heart of every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. The star that gives hope, gives us the ability to know that we are with God and God's We can have communion with our God, and there's nothing can separate us from the love of our God. That is the unfinished story of Christmas that we know and fully understand. As the song we sang earlier states, Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. This is the unfinished story of Christmas. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our last hymn, People Look East, number 161. Church family and all, please know that no one loves you like God loves you. That is the purpose of Christmas. That when we as human beings could do nothing, absolutely nothing, to merit God's favor, God sends the babe that would become Christ who died on a cross for our sins. Let us remember the reason for the season. Not because of the gifts that you're going to get from others, but the gift that God gave, that God gave of himself as the only gift that could restore us with him. The gift that is eternal that gives us the ability to have eternal life, that we will be at peace with our God. That is the reason for the season and the purpose of the babe. So our God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, we thank you, our God. We thank you that you are with us always and continually. You said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us, not even until the end of the ages. 
and we are securing you, and we're so thankful. So we give you the praise, the honor, and glory that during this season, as the world acknowledges that the Son was born, let us continue to have Christ in our hearts, and let us share the good news of Christ with others. We bless you, our God, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody.